Welcome to the video lecture on the subject Computer Vision. Unit 3 Future Based Alignment and Motion Estimation Part 1 I am Dr. K. Patma Priya, Assistant Professor, Department of ECE, Government College of Engineering, Trinalveli. Matching Geometrical Models via Alignment Alignment is the most common paradigm for matching 3D models to either 2D or 3D data. The steps are Hypothesize a correspondence between a set of model points and a set of data points. From the correspondence, compute a transformation from model to data. Apply the transformation to the model futures to produce transformed futures. Compare the transformed model futures to the image futures to verify or disprove the hypothesis. Single 2D images of the objects are collected and they are used for modeling the 3D objects. So this is done in the 2D, 3D alignment. So the full 3D models such as GC or SCB can be used. It view class models representing the characteristics view of the objects. View classes and viewing sphere. The space of viewpoints can be partitioned into a finite set of characteristic views. Each view class represents a set of viewpoints that have something in common that is the same surfaces are visible, same line segments are visible and relational distance between pairs of them is small. Three view classes of a cube. Either we can see one surface of a cube, two surfaces of cube or three surfaces of the cube. In future based alignment, many uh, we match many extracted features across different images. We verify the geometrically consistent of matching features and applications of feature based alignment are image stitching and augmented reality and it is not restricted to. Feature based alignment, in feature based alignment we take an image, we partition it and take it into number of images and we start to match and calibrate images in the image coordinates and these are the image of the vanishing points in which we use for conversion of 2D data to 3D data. And outline of feature based alignment. We are about to discuss 2D and 3D feature based alignment, post estimation, and geometric intrinsic calibration. And in 2D and 3D feature based alignment, we are having uh, the topics, different techniques for uh, 2D alignment using lean, uh, least squares. Iterative algorithms, robust least squares and ransack 3D alignment and the application of it is panography. We assume a set of matched 2D points in two images of the same object or scene and we do this for global parametric spatial transformation. So how do we relate them? So we use the function f which relates those two points that is the image point in the first image is xi and the next one is xi dash which is your predicted value where xi x dash is the function of x comma p and these are some forms of transformations that is translation euclidean similarity affine and projective in 2d and 3d feature based alignment we estimate the motion between two or more sets of matched 2d or 3d points in this section, we respect to global parametric transformations and curved surfaces with higher order transformation. We don't discuss on non-rigid or elastic transformations. 2D and 3D feature based alignment. The basic set of 2D planar transformations are translation, Euclidean, similarity, affine and projective. And these are the different matrices DOF and the, what it preserves and their corresponding icons. 2D alignment using least squares. Given a set of matched future points xi, xi dash, a planar parametric transformation x dash which is a function of x, p where p are the parameters of the function f. So how do we estimate these motion parameters p? We square the residuals that is the difference between these two points that is the measured location and predicted location. We take the difference that is the residual and we calculate the squares of them. Here your xi cap is the measured location and xi tilde is the predicted location. And in these squares we minimize the sum of the squared residuals. ELS is equal to summation of 
Ri modulus square. Many of the motion models which will be having a linear relationship that del x, uh, delta x is equal to x dash minus x. J of x is the Jacobian transformation for the function f which is equal to dou f by dou p. For simple global transformations, the amount of mo movement that is del x is equal to uh, x dash minus x which is a linear function of the parameter p which is mediated by the Jacobian j of x and uh, your delta x is equal to x dash minus x which is equal to j of x Jacobian into p. So the Jacobian matrix is being given. The corresponding Jacobians of the 2D coordinate transformations and their matrix, the parameters and the Jacobian matrix are given. And these are the parameters which use for each transformation in the 2D translations. And in least square method, ELS is equal to summation of all the squares of the residuals. In linear least squares, this is a formula for ELLS and this gives the linear relationship between them. And you are minimizing them by solving the equation A, P equals B where A and B are given. Some uh, summary of your linear least squares method. Many transformations have a linear relationship between the motion and the unknown parameters which gives the all the formulas of delta x, ELLS and you minimize the equation, minimize by solving this equation AP equals B where A and B are given below. And in weighted least squares method, you, uh, you take the summation over all the points I where you divide the residual squares by the variance square iterative algorithms. Uh, always we don't have the linear relationship. So when we don't have a linear relationship, we go for nonlinear least squares and nonlinear regression. And in iterative algorithms, iteratively we find an update delta p to the current parameter estimate p by minimizing the value of ENLS. And this is the equation for ENLS. Solve the del p with that is equation is a plus lambda diagonal of a delta p equals p where a and b are given below and this equation your lambda is an additional damping parameter which ensures that a system takes a downhill step in energy and it can be set to zero in many applications and iterative update the parameter we update the parameter p by replacing with p plus delta p. Nonlinear least squares method. So, in nonlinear least squares method, we have the iterative algorithm to solve for p and we use the del p to update the p values and then we calculate the ENLS with these formulas and the final equation to solve for minimizing the value. And in projective 2D motion, we have two points x dash and y dash which are given here and your Jacobian matrix for the projective 2D motion is given but d is the denominator multiplying both sides by the denominator to obtain the initial guess for the parameters of those uh, 2D motion, projective motion and which will not be a non-optical form. This is your Jacobian matrix which is not an optimal form. So you rewrite it by uh, multiplying the factor 1 by D with this equation and this performs better in practice. And the most principal way to do the estimation is Gauss-Newton approximation and here is the matrix equation for that which converges to a local minimum with proper checking for downhill steps. An alternative compositional algorithm will be having this simplified formula. And this is the uh, least squares approximation graph of it. You have a linear line where all the data points uh, lie over the other. And the drawback of the ELS is if the data points doesn't lie over this, these points are called as the outliers which is far from the line which you have uh, on the relationship, linearity relationship. So to avoid that, we use the robust least squares method in which we use a M estimator which reduces the negative influence of the outliers and this gives the relationship of ERLS. And in robust least squares method, most robust version of least squares are required when there are outliers among the correspondences. So in M estimator, we apply a robust penalty function rho of r for all the residuals and 
weight function w of r which will be finding the stationary point which is equivalent to minimize minimizing the iteratively rewritten least squares so e i r l s equation is given the ransack and least means of squares least median of squares sometimes too many outliers will be preventing the i r l s algorithm to converge easily to the uh, global optimum so a better approach is to find a starting set of in layer correspondences and ransack is the abbreviation of random sample consensus and the other method which we use is the least median of squares so in the ransack method we use the variable from i from 1 to s yes, s is the total number of samples you randomly select a subset of the total data compute the transformation from this subset and you count the number of in layers so if the number of in layers is sufficiently large then recalculate the transformation including the in layers so you start by selecting a random subset of k correspondences compute an initial estimate of p and ransack counts the number of the in layers whose ri will be modulus of ri will be less than or equal to epsilon least median of squares find the median of modulus residual squares the random selection process is repeated yes times because your total number of samples is yes the sample set with the largest number of in layers is kept as the final solution so this is a final graph of your least data points over your least squares of approximation using ransack now you fix up a line at line uh, you decide up a linear relationship over all the data points now the left out data points you find the distance or the gap between this line and the data points and this is your epsilon the plus or minus epsilon line and this is the errors between the data points and the line which you have decided this is the line so you find out the uh, error between the data points the distance between the data points and the line these are your least squares errors so you change up to the next line again you calculate your distances between uh, left out data points and to this line so this much all the reddish points are lying over the line and all these blue dots are the outliers so you find a number of linear relationship like this and you find the optimum global optimum uh, linear relationship which get exactly the more number of outliers so the problems with ransack is your small k is the amount of samples initially taken for the data subset and small p is the probability that a randomly chosen sample is an in layer to its own transform and s is the num s number of times to iterate the uh, ransack for a 99% probability of success so here are your amount of samples the probability of your in layer and uh, this is the total number of samples so maximum 293 samples have been used so s is equal to log 1 minus capital p divided by log 1 minus small p power k where your s must be large enough to ensure that the random sampling has a good chance of finding a true set of in layers so in this equation your capital p is the probability of success and small p is the probability of in layer so number of trials yes to attain a 99% of probability of success is given and the number of trials grow quickly with the number of sample points used so use the minimum number of sample points to reduce the number of trials which is also normally used in practice in preemptive ransack we only score a subset of the measurement season in an initial round and select the most plausible hypothesis for additional scoring and selection and it significantly speeds up the performance prosac it is an abbreviation of progressive sample consensus where random samples are initially added from the most confident matches it speeds up the process of finding a likely good set of in layers and these are the uh, graphs for the prosac method this is your least square approximation so with the data points you find different distance between the data points and the squares of it so the initial subset of data which is chosen in a semi random process so the comparison of your ransack and prosac so average uh, your number of samples used then uh, time elapsed for the two techniques and minimum and maximum values for ransack and uh, prosac has been given
Next is 3D alignment. Many computer vision applications require the alignment of 3D points. Linear 3D transformation can use regular least squares to estimate the parameters. Aligning 3D points instead of 2D features. The biggest difference between 2D and 3D coordinate transformations is that the parametrization of 3D rotation matrix is not as straightforward. So rigid Euclidean motion has been used for 3D alignment and ER3D which is equal to summation of modulus Xi dash minus R Xi minus T where we can center the point clouds to the point C. So Xi cap is equal to Xi minus C and Xi dash cap is equal to Xi dash minus C dash. We estimate the rotation between the Xi cap and Xi dash cap. So in rigid Euclidean motion in 3D, this is the matrix which you use for the Euclidean transformation and the parameters included in it. So translation compound can be estimated from the difference in the centroids. So in orthogonal Procrustes algorithm, we perform a SVD on the correlation matrix. So C is the correlation matrix which is the summation of X dash cap and X transform cap which is equal to U summation V transform. The rotation matrix R is given by U into V transform. And in absolute orientation algorithm, we estimate the unit quaternion associated with capital R. You convert the C into a 4 cross 4 matrix and then find the eigenvector associated with the largest eigenvalue. In, orthogress, uh, in orthogonal progress algorithm, compute the SVD, that is the singular value decomposition of the 3 cross 3 correlation matrix. Your correlation matrix and the rotation matrix is given below. In 3D alignment, in the absolute orientation algorithm, we estimate the unit quaternion corresponding to the rotation matrix capital R. Form a 4 cross 4 matrix from the entries in C. Find the eigenvector associated with its large positive eigenvalue. The difference of these two techniques is negligible below the effects of measurement noise. Sometimes these closed form algorithms are not applicable and it uses a incremental rotation update. And thank you. This is the end of your first part of the video of Unit 3. The rest we can see in the second part of the video.